Now, welcome to Thor's Lightning Takes with some news from Naboo. Well, it is April Fool's Day, so I'll let you have this one. Yay. All right, let's get to the news. From Naboo. <laughs> All right, so Kenobi had a date swap on us. Now, instead of being May 25th, it will be May the 27th with two episodes. I mean, I'm kind of happy for the two episodes, but I really don't like the date move. It doesn't line up with the 45th anniversary of A New Hope anymore, which is why it was set so late in the first place. And it's clashing with Star Wars Celebration. Yeah, that's the really confusing one. Like, yeah. I would almost... I mean, I'm not going to Celebration this year, unfortunately. But mm. if I was, I think I'd almost be a little upset. I mean, I, mean, I want to be out there... I'm they'll have a theater where you can wander in and watch the episodes. Perhaps. But that's not how I would want to watch it. Well, you might want to watch it with a bunch of people. I mean, it, it could be cool if they do set something up. They have, like, a premiere at Star Wars Celebration, I suppose. Yeah, but not everyone will be able to fit in. Well, no, yeah, certainly not. Every, I mean, half of Celebration is waiting in line to get to some, you know, getting inside somewhere, then finding yeah. out you can't get in there. But And the other half is a rubber sale. Yes. I mean, <laughs> we're not really selling Star Wars Celebration here. It's fun. There's a lot of fans you can talk to, a lot of cool things to see. It's more fun if you're able to get tickets to go yes. to one of the big... get the tickets in advance or make sure, otherwise you're really going to roam around a rummage sale most of the time. But anyway, getting to it, no, I mean, this is confusing because if I go to Star Wars Celebration, I, you know, I don't want to have to worry about, oh, the new episode of Kenobi drops today too? Like, You're what? already not going to get much sleep going to Celebration yeah. multiple days. Now you're like, well, now i got to be up at 2 in the morning. Morning. I mean, I'm, all, I'm almost already upset about this because it was nice. Like, okay, Wednesday, you know, the Kenobi episode drop. I can We can do reviews, do all that. And then that weekend, Star Wars Celebration, obviously, a lot of videos mm -hmm. are going to be made. Uh, probably on this channel, on my main channel. We might just move this show to the main channel. It might just be easier. And so now it's, okay, stay up till 2 a.m. my time. Watch Kenobi. Two episodes of Kenobi till 4 in the morning, hopefully. Which means it'll be about an hour an episode, which is probably not going to happen. So stay up, watch all these episodes of Kenobi, get up early, start covering Star Wars Celebration, and I'm not complaining. Look, that's not like the worst day anybody has ever had in the world, but it's still very confusing to move this but think forward, of how, not, or backward, not forward. I think right? of how rough it's going to be for people at Celebration. That's what I'm saying, yeah. I mean, you're going to go into Celebration that morning, and people will have already watched Kenobi. You don't think anyone's going to talk about it? They might oh, spoil absolutely. it for you, even though you're trying to avoid spoilers, because you just got up, got ready, went to the event. Absolutely. I mean, why don't they move this forward? Why not a couple of weeks before? And you can still do one episode a week if you they, want to. They could. I mean, if they moved it forward, it wouldn't clash with Moon... They don't have to clash with Moon Knight, and they don't have to clash with Ms. Marvel, which they're going to do anyway. It still clashes with Ms. Marvel, it even? It still clashes with Ms. Marvel, because they all they did was they popped two episodes up, so it's still going to run two or three episodes into Ms. Marvel, and because they're still doing the rest on Wednesday. Yeah, yeah, which... So they're going to... New episodes of Miss... See, so yeah, I, I first thought that, okay, Miss Marvel is probably not going to be their hugest, you know, Disney Plus series. Not saying anything against the character, not trying to make any kind of statement, but it's probably not the most popular, you know, show coming. And so if you have Kenobi, you're going to have people flocking to Disney Plus that day, and then they're going to see, oh, a new Marvel series. I guess I can check that out, too. Well, you go from the, the blood and violence and craziness that is Moon Knight to the bubblegum happiness <laughs> that, that is Miss Marvel. I mean, yeah, I think my, my problem with the Miss Marvel trailer is it looked a lot like a, a Spider-Man No Way Home kind of clone. It, the, just the style, everything about it. When you got something you know, that works. Hmm. Yeah, and I mean, Spider-Man is iconic. Everybody in the world knows him. You know, random other teenager you may have never heard of character, you're probably going to be less interested in. Well, I'm just being honest here. What's interesting is, you know, half the series is going to be over in a week. Because we'll have two episodes, then on Wednesday we'll have a third. Yeah. And honestly, I'm pretty sure that the move has nothing to do with the Ms. Marvel series at all. It must not if they're still going to be overlapping. What my actual hope is, is that maybe there's a Star Wars project like Andor that they're going to launch earlier than expected and they are yeah, announcing it at now. celebration and they're like haha let's get that hype yeah, train moving no, way. no it's not no. it's not anything that's going to benefit the fans or anything like that it's done because somebody somewhere behind the scenes realized something wasn't going to line up the way they wanted to and they had to change it or maybe they're doing this on purpose because it doesn't give kenobi time to form too many theories 
I mean, they're giving you two episodes, then they're giving you a, a third one, like, right away. Like, maybe those first couple episodes are really heavy theory bait, and they don't want the theory crafters to go overboard and possibly ruin the show they're by gonna go, overcomplicating it. It only takes a day to go overboard with theories. I mean, I, not saying that's not an impossible thought yeah, or theory. but you're getting theory. two episodes at once now. Sure. You can't theorize from one to two. But, no, I'm, I'm just saying, I don't, how much theory crafting are we going to do with Kenobi? We know, ultimately, how it has to end, right? Kenobi is still on Tatooine, and... Still in hiding, and Luke and Leia are fine. So, I mean, we could theory craft about how we get there, you but theory craft about any other character that shows up. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> All right. Well, interesting decision. I, you know, I guess we should move on. I don't know what else to. I don't know what this all means, but we're never going to find out. So, I guess we should just mm. d- d- accept it, and that's it. All right. Next piece of news: we've got an excerpt has come out from Star Wars Brotherhood. That shows the first meeting of Kenobi and Ventress. Ooh. So the book Brotherhood comes out May 10th, and it's going to be about Anakin and Obi-Wan and their, like, you know, brotherhoodness. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. But the excerpt available on StarWars.com gives you the beginnings of a story of Kenobi and Ventress's first meeting. It looks kind of like it's set during very, very early in the war, where they call Dooku still a secret Sith apprentice. Okay. It's almost like he left to, jo- to join his people. I mean, Count Dooku is still very connected to his planet and his people. Yeah. So it's well, almost like count, he yeah. chose to like leave the Order to go and support his people joining the Separatist side, but that we don't know he is a Sith. And so when Kenobi meets Ventress the first time, he doesn't know she is a dark side assassin. Yes. And honestly, their banter is adorable. Yeah, I think everybody likes Sasage and uh, Kenobi in mm-hmm. Clone Wars. So if you're interested, you can definitely go to StarWars.com. You can read the excerpt that's available. Found it very cool. Made me more excited for the book to know it went beyond just the ramifications of Anakin and Obi-Wan that stretches out more to give us another look at the war. Well, it's it's interesting how all in there... Not interesting, it's not surprising, I guess, but they're going all in on Kenobi in the next like month or two. There's a new comic series about Obi-Wan. There's this book that involves Obi-Wan. There's obviously the series. It is uh, Kenobi time. Yeah, that book's going to come out, and uh, you're going to have, like, what, 17 days to get it read? <laughs> I mean, it won't take me that long to read it. I think 17 days is more than enough. <laughs> Most likely, it's way more than enough. Yeah, I, I can read a book in a day, just like you, but not quite as fast as you. You are you know, reading books is your speciality. That makes me sound really lame. <laughs> no, that's awesome. I mean, you can power through books like no one I've ever seen, and then I quiz you like, did you really read it? And yeah, you did. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Sailor Naboo, the librarian. Yes, you... Jocasta Jac- Naboo. <laughs> that is what. Yes, you are a librarian. Next news story today. Star Wars Celebration has confirmed more special guests. Giancarlo Espinosa, who played Moff Gideon in The Mandalorian. Omed Abtahi, who played Dr. Pershing, also from The Mandalorian. Could this be a coincidence? Dun, dun, dun. It is both of their first appearances at Celebration. Of course, we haven't had a celebration for either of them to attend. No, we haven't. (laughs) So, I don't want to read too much into it, but at the same time, I do. (laughs) Cloning's back, boys. Cloning's back on the menu. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Now uh, let's bring on the Wookiees. Jonas Suetamo, the Chewbacca from the sequel trilogy, as well as Solo, will attend, as well as fellow Wookiee Carrie Jones, better known as Chrysanthemum from the Book of Boba Fett. Ooh, cool. Yeah, I know. Wookie buds. Wookie, yeah. It's cool to have more than... We I mean, Peter Mayhew... You can see taller. They'll be standing next to each other. It's going to be great. Peter Mayhew is the legend. I, it's kind of sad that he doesn't get to see the evolution of more Wookiees than just the, him. The yeah. Wookiee Brotherhood. I mean, there are some, obviously, in you know, Revenge of the Sith and stuff, <laughs> but it, it's cool to see more Wookiees. Tall people getting some some love. Yeah. Well, speaking of uh, Boba Fett, Daniel Logan, who played him in Attack of the Clones and the Clone Wars, is also set to appear. Could but this be a... No. They have not mentioned if Boba Fett from Book of Boba Fett will actually... Tomorrow Morris? So. Yeah. He's not set to appear, but his younger iteration He's is. He's taking another dip in the back to tank. He won't be able to make it. <laughs> Having some more flash practice. <laughs> They'll wheel him out in the back to tank. <laughs> that would be so cool. Oh. Just for, just good old, you know, oh, that would fake be um, wax. I don't know about wax mold. I don't know if wax works in the back to, but, well, you know, get him in there. Not that there's a real back to. Continuing onward. Fans of the Star Wars novels can be excited to see we've got Claudia Gray, 
Justina Ireland, Daniel Jose Older, Kavan Scott, and Charles Sewell. Nice Overall, array of uh, authors. They actually all work on High Republic book stuff yeah, as they well. Are that, uh, I'm going to imagine there's going to be some High Republic announcements too for Phase 2 coming up later this year. But they didn't all just work on High Republic. But, no, there's but some they of them. are all from High Republic. Yeah, they're some of the more prominent names in the, the publishing side of things these days. Also attending, we have Margot Apostles, Ewok Toak from Episode 6, Jet Lucas, Zet Jukasa, Episode 2 and 3, <laughs> Yeah, he gets killed in episode three, yes. Yes. Orly Shinosa, Shakti, Kevin Thompson, Ewok Chubre from episode six, and Tim Rose, Admiral Akbar Puppeteer. Yay. I know we're filling out that list of attendees. Reminder, celebration May 26th through the 29th. So we're getting some Ewoks and Wookiees. It's, it's cool to see Wookiees and Ewoks together because... They're both from the bear type family. <laughs> <laughs> that is not technical. No. I love Ewoks though. I do too. See, I'm of that right age where I was young enough to like and appreciate the Ewoks. I was five when Return of the Jedi came out, so oddly enough, I like Ewoks. I know. <laughs> hate me in the comments, but I like them. Okay, so here's our off topic Star Wars y, off Star Wars topic y <laughs> okay. piece for today. In other news, Game of Thrones House of the Dragon will be airing beginning August 21st. It will be 10 episodes. So dust off your sword. We're heading back to Westeros. For Winds of Winter? No. No? <laughs> no. George no. couldn't we're, find time to... We're going to go look finish. at dragons because dragons are way cool. Dragons are cool. Not yeah. no Winds of Winter. And Matt Smith will be back. Should We put a, We should put a poll down there and like, what are the odds that George R.R. R. ever finishes the like, Song of Fire and Ice? Ice like and fire, I said, sorry. it sounds lower because even though he left a bunch of plot threads in the books, they weren't in the TV show. And if he's trying to make it end the same, there's a lot of catching up to do. I don't think he. I don't think he wants the, to end the same. I don't think the reaction was so uh, positive for season eight of Game of Thrones that you'd want to. But it seems weird to think that he would end it differently because the TV shows are supposed to model after the books, and he's like, "Well, changing well, the ending, no one problem, liked it." Problem is, Brand who. Spoiler alert, I guess, becomes, you know, king... He's fusing with a tree. He's becoming a tree in the books right now, so I'm not sure how that works. He's, yeah, he's fusing with a tree, becoming yeah. the three-eyed raven. Yes, which is more prevalent in the books than it ever was in the And Caitlin show. Stark came back from the dead. Yes, yeah, she's a zombie thing. Not walking. a zombie, exactly, but well, what she do you was call... brought back by the Red God, same she as one of the other knights. She seemed kind of zombie-ish, if I remember right. Not zombie-ish, she just, her throat was slit, so she just, like, hold her... Throat yeah, that's talks. not zombie-ish at all. Everybody has to hold their throat closed to, you know, that's just a normal day in the neighborhood. Exactly. But no, there are a lot of differences, so. Well, and Sansa's not in. No, that's a whole different, too. Yeah. Not at all. She's still in the Eerie. They don't even think it's Sansa in Winterfell. They it's think not. It's, yeah. it's, it's one of, like, her ladies' maids. Well, no, but I'm saying, is, don't no, they, they think they, Arya They thought is it was in, Arya, yeah. not even Sansa. Yeah. And Sansa, of course, not there. No. Rickon's gone to the wild who knows where. And yeah, he's you been don't gone see, we haven't seen Rickon in, in a long time. He doesn't die at the Battle Somehow, of the Bastards. Somehow, because yeah. that hasn't even happened. No. If it happens at all, who knows? But anyway, you want more of this discussion, check out our Game of Thrones channel. <laughs> I'm <laughs> kidding. We're, going, we're getting off topic, but no. It, interesting to see the show. I, yeah, clearly read the books. I'm a fan. Mm -hmm. Maybe not a fan of season eight, but fan of Game of Thrones in general. So it should be interesting. But Absolutely. for now, that's all we've got for you this time. So leave your comments below. Tell us what you think about any and all of today's news. And let's talk some Star Wars or some Game of Thrones perhaps as well. And until next time, thanks for watching.